Hello and welcome to the 43rd video in this beginner's guide to Adobe After Effects. In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to easily animate still images in After Effects. In the previous episode, we made some serious progress with the video presentation, where we easily created more sections by duplicating compositions and simply changing the contents inside. In this video, we are going to jump back into one of the sections to include some animating images to add more dynamic to the video presentation. So in this video, we are going to be covering the following topics. Importing images into compositions and animating still images. So let's get into it. So here I am where we left off in the previous episode where we placed in these four new sections. Now if you're watching for the first time and wish to follow along, you can find this document in the project folder which you can download. Link is in the description. The download folder comes with lots of exercise documents we will be using on this course that have been carefully developed to aid your learning experience. The folder also comes with document resources such as videos, graphics and images you can use to build your first video presentation from scratch later on in this course. To get the full learning experience, I recommend you get the project folder. Download link with instructions is in the description. So with the project folder open, click into folder S3, create a project, then click into folder 43, animating still images, and open the animating stills document. Now, if you are continuing on from the last episode, make sure you have your document open ready. So with our document open, let's proceed. So right now I have the main composition open and we can see that we have our six sections. Now if we look at section 4 here, we can see that it does not stretch to meet the start of section 5. Now I'll double click on section 4 to open it in its own tab, and this includes the video and type layout we created in the previous video. So right now, this composition is only 8 seconds, and if I quickly click back on the main sequence tab, we can see it only goes so far. So I'll double click to go back into the shortage comp, and I'm going to make this comp longer. So to do this, I'm going to press Command K on Mac or Control K on PC to pull up the composition settings. Now, if we look towards the bottom, we can see that the duration of this comp is currently around seven seconds and just change the comp to 17 seconds and click OK. Now, if we zoom out on the timeline panel, we can see we have extended the length. Perfect. So next, if I click onto the main comp tab, now we can see the layer bar reaches to section five but right now only part of the bar is highlighted. So I'll place my mouse cursor over the end of the highlighted section and click and drag right to fill the bar. So right now, this bar is extending over section five. Now we don't need it to go this far. So I'll drag my time indicator towards the beginning of section five while holding shift so it snaps to marker five. So now the time indicator is placed at a particular point on the section four layer here. With the time indicator in place, I'll double click on the section 4 comp and when we open this up, the time indicator will be placed in the exact position, corresponding to where we just placed it on the main comp. Now, if we look over to the far left at the top of the timeline indicator, we can see it says 15 seconds. So I'll click into this region and copy the time code. Now, I'll press Command K on Mac or Control K on PC to pull up the composition settings. This time, I'm going to come to the bottom where it states duration, click into the number box and paste, and we'll see our new time code. I'll click OK, and that will shorten the time of the comp. Now, if we click back into the main comp, we can see the clip is now trimmed perfect to meet the start of section five. So I'll double click back into the shortage comp, and now we can see the remaining time we have left on the comp. So for this comp, we are going to keep the video sequence at the start and lead into some images which we are going to animate to add some dynamics. So let's begin by bringing in some images. So first, I'll come over to my project panel and toggle up my folders to make sure everything is tucked away. And I'll double click on the blank space in the project panel. Upon click, a browser window will appear. Here, I'll navigate to the project folder. In the project folder, I'll come into the project assets folder, then into the images folder, then into the JPEG folder and into the location folder and click on Shoreditch. With the folder selected, I'll click Open. And the folder will be imported into After Effects and inside the folder will be all the images. Perfect. So what I'll quickly do here is drag my new folder into the Assets folder 
and in the Assets folder, I'll drag it into the Images folder and into the JPEG folder. So now it's neatly organized. So now I'll start to bring in some images. So I'll toggle down my Shoreditch folder. I'll click to select Shoreditch 1 JPEG and I'll press Command forward slash on Mac or Control forward slash on PC to quickly place the image into the comp. Upon click, the image is now in the comp and we can see it has become the top layer in the timeline panel. Now, if I zoom out of the control panel here, with the image selected, we can see that this is a large image, much larger than the screen area here. Now, it's important to mention that whenever you bring in an image into After Effects and place it into the composition, depending on its actual size, you will get different results. In this instance, we have placed in a very large image. We will be tweaking the scale and position shortly, but before that, let's place in some more images. So now I'll come back to the project panel, I'll click to select Shoreditch 2 JPEG and press Command forward slash on Mac or Control forward slash on PC to quickly place the image into my comp. Next, I'll select Shoreditch 3, I'll press Command forward slash on Mac or Control forward slash on PC to quickly place the image into my comp. I'll click to select Shoreditch 4, I'll press Command forward slash on Mac or Control forward slash on PC to quickly place the image into my comp. And lastly, I'll click to select Shoreditch 5 and press command forward slash on Mac or control forward slash on PC to quickly place the image into my comp. And now we have five image layers at the top of the layer stack in my timeline. So I'll select the top image layer, then hold shift and select the bottom image layer. I'll click on the color box of the layer and change this to yellow. So next I'm going to trim these layers. So I'll click on the timeline to place my time indicator at five seconds. Now with all the image layers currently selected, I'll press alt open square bracket and that will trim the start of the image layers like so. Next, I'll click to place my time indicator at seven seconds. And with the image layers still selected, I'll press Alt close bracket, and that will trim the end of the image layers. So now I'll click and drag image two while holding shift to snap the beginning of the layer to the end of the layer above. Then I'll click and drag image three while holding shift to snap the beginning of the layer to the end of the layer above. And I'll do this to each image so each image appears one after the other, like so. And that will take us to the end of the comp. Now, if there is a little gap at the end of the comp, I'll simply click and drag the end of the last image bar across and over the end of the comp, like so. Perfect. So with the top image selected, I'll press shift and select the bottom image. With them all selected, I'm going to click on the name of the layers and drag them down just on top of the video layer, like so. Now, if we click to place the time indicator above the first image, we can still see the type layout on top of the image. Right now, we don't want this. So I'll click and drag my time indicator while holding shift towards the start of my first image layer to snap it like so. With my time indicator in place, I'll now select the top layer and the bottom layer of my type layout composition, and I'll press Alt close square bracket, and this will trim all these layers so now they do not overlap with the image. Next, there are a few layers under the image layers that we will need to sort out, but we will do this later. For now, we are going to look at how we can animate these images. So what I want to happen here is that as the images appear, instead of them just appearing as static images, I want to give them a bit of movement to zoom in on some of the details to really draw attention to the cool graffiti on the walls in these pictures. So I'll come and start with the first image. And with the first image selected, I'll click and drag my time indicator while holding shift to snap to the start of the image bar. Next, I'll press S to activate the scale property on the layer, and I'll come into the scale property and click and drag left like so, just to zoom the image out. Also, I'll press on the left and right arrow buttons on the keyboard just to adjust the position of the image in the frame. So with my image zoomed out, I'll come and click on the stopwatch for scale and add the first scale keyframe. Next, I'll drag my time indicator while holding shift to snap to the end of the image layer. And I'll come back to the scale property and this time click and drag right to scale up my image to zoom in on the graffiti. Upon scaling up, we will now have a new keyframe for scale applied to the layer. So if I scrub my time indicator between these two new keyframes, we can see the effect that is having. When the image appears, it also zooms nicely into the graffiti. So that's a really simple animation on an image. All we applied there was zoom, but let's look at adding position. So next I'll drag my time indicator while holding shift to snap to the start of my second image. With my time indicator in place, I should now see my second image. 
So I'll select the next image and press S to activate the scale property. Just like earlier, I'll come and scale it down. And I'll click and drag the image to the left to place the image in the frame nicely where I want it to start. Then I'll press P to reveal the position settings. I'll come and click the stopwatch to add a position keyframe and I'll drag my time indicator while holding shift to the end of the image layer. This time, I'll click and drag the image to the right while holding shift to move it in a straight line where I want the image to end. Upon doing this, it will add a new position keyframe to the layer. So now as I scrub my time indicator between these two frames, we can see that this image simply pans across the screen. By adding position keyframes, we can create this nice effect for panning the image. So on the next image, let's look at how we can add both scaling and position. So I'll drag my time indicator while holding shift to snap to the beginning of my third image. With my time indicator in place, I should now see my third image. This time, I'm going to keep my image zoomed out and simply click and drag to change the position in the keyframe. I'll press S to activate the scale property on the layer and I'll come down and click the stopwatch to add a keyframe for scale. Then I'll press P to reveal the position settings and I'll come and click the stopwatch to add a position keyframe. Now I'll press U and U again to reveal the two keyframes applied to my image layer. I'll drag my time indicator while holding shift to the end of the image layer and I'll come back to scale and click and drag left to zoom the image out like so. And this will apply a new keyframe for scale on my layer. Now I'll click and drag my image to position in the frame. Upon doing this, it will add a new position keyframe to the layer. So now as I scrub my time indicator between these two keyframes, we can see that the image zooms out and pans across. So now it's just a simple case of using the same technique but changing up the animation styles. So next, I'll drag my time indicator while holding shift to snap to the beginning of my fourth image. With my time indicator in place, I should now see my fourth image. For this image, I want to zoom in. So I'll press S to activate the scale property on the layer. I'll come down and click the stopwatch to add a keyframe for scale. I'll click and drag on the scale property to just zoom out. And I'll click and drag the image to the right to reposition the image in the frame. Then I'll press P to reveal the position settings and I'll come and click the stopwatch to add a position keyframe. Then I'll press U and U again to reveal the two keyframes applied to my image. Now I'll drag my time indicator while holding shift to the end of the image layer. I'll come back to scale and click and drag right to zoom in on the image. This will apply a new keyframe for scale on my layer and I'll click and drag my image to position in the frame. Upon doing this, it will add a new position keyframe to the layer. So now as I scrub my time indicator between these two keyframes, we can see that this image zooms in and pans across. So all that's left is my last image. So I'll drag my time indicator while holding shift to snap to the beginning of the fifth layer. With my time indicator in place, I should now see my fifth image. Now for this image, I just want to zoom out. So I'll press S to activate the scale property on the layer. I'll come down and click the stopwatch to add a keyframe for scale. I'll click and drag the image to reposition in the frame, then I'll press P to reveal the position settings. Next, I'll come and click the stopwatch to add a position keyframe, and I'll press U and U again to reveal the two keyframes applied to my image. Now I'll drag the time indicator while holding shift to the end of the image layer. With the time indicator placed at the end, I'll come back to scale and click and drag left to zoom out of the image. This will apply a new keyframe for scale on my layer and I'll click and drag my image to position in the frame. Upon doing this, it will add a new position keyframe to the layer. So now, as I scrub my time indicator between these two keyframes, we can see that the image zooms out and pans across. I'll place my time indicator at the start of the first layer, I'll press B on the keyboard to set the start of the workspace area, and I'll make sure the end of the workspace area is set to the end of the comp. I'll place my time indicator at the start of the workspace area, and I'll press spacebar to activate preview. And now we can see the animated sequence for the images. And that is how you can animate still images in After Effects. So adding a little scale and position effect can add more dynamics to your presentation. And I'll press spacebar to stop. Now before we end this tutorial and move into the next episode, there are just a few things we need to do to finish up this comp. So I'll select the top image and while holding shift, I'll select the bottom image. Right now we can see the keyframe, so I'll press U and U again to hide the keyframes. So I'll zoom out on my timeline panel 
and now I can see there are some video layers that can no longer be seen. And this is because they are under the image layers above. So I'll come and click these last videos at the bottom and I'll simply press backspace to delete them. So now we have three video layers and our image layers here. So now I'll select the top image layer and press and hold shift and select the bottom image layer. With them all selected, I'll click on the name of the layers and drag them down below the video layers. Right now, we need the video layers to be on top. Now I'll come and click the first video layer. With shift held down, I'll select my third video layer. With them selected, I'll press U to show the keyframes for each. So on these layers, we have transition effects at the end, which we created earlier. So I'll drag my time indicator while holding shift to snap to the start of the first image layer. I'll press F2 to deselect the three video layers and then I'll click and drag my third video layer across so the first keyframe for the transition meets with the time indicator. Now if I scrub my time indicator across these two keyframes, we can now see that the third video nicely transitions into the image below. So next I'll come to the second video layer and drag the bar to the right across and over the top of the video layer below. This is going to reveal more of the video layer. Now I'm going to click and drag over the keyframes under this layer and simply click and drag them to the right and make sure that the first keyframe starts at the start of the video layer below. So now if I scrub my time indicator over these keyframes, we can see the second video transitions into the video below. So all we have done here is extend the second and third video clip further along the timeline. Okay, so that sorts out the video and images. All that's left to do is clear up the type and image layout. Now if I scrub my time indicator over the end of the type layers above, they abruptly disappear. So to these layers, I want to add a nice fade out effect. So I'll select the top layer and press and hold shift and select the bottom layer, the gradient layer. I'll click and drag my time indicator while holding shift to snap to the end of these layers and I'll press T to activate the opacity settings. Now we will see that some of these layers will already have opacity keyframes applied. So now I am carefully going to come and click the diamond on the layers that already have opacity keyframes applied. And for the layers that do not have opacity keyframes, I'll click the stopwatch. Do this correctly and we will now see an opacity keyframe on each layer. So I'll drag my timeline indicator a little over to the left like so then I'll come in and click on the diamond on any layer, and then we will see another keyframe applied to each layer. So I'll drag my time indicator to the last keyframes while holding shift to snap, and I'll come and drag transparency to zero. Now, as I scrub my time indicator over these keyframes, we will now see that the type layers fade away just before the image sequence appears. So I'll just quickly press Command A on Mac or Control A on PC to select all the layers, and I'll press U to hide all the keyframes for each layer. So I'll come up to the work area and double click to expand that across the full comp. I'll place my time indicator at the start of the comp and I'll press spacebar to activate preview. And that completes the section of the presentation. At the start, we have our video intro, which then fades away to reveal the animated image sequence. Perfect. So I'll press spacebar to stop and I'll click back to the main comp tab up in the top timeline panel. So now we are starting to get somewhere. Now we have sections one, two, three, four, and five complete. Now looking at section six here, we have this complete, but we are having the same issue we had right at the start of this video. Currently, section six is too small and it really needs to lead up to marker seven here. So before we end this video, let's address this quickly. So I'll double click into section six here at the top and we will open the sequence up in its own tab. Now using the same technique we used earlier, I'll press Command K on Mac or Control K on PC to pull up the composition settings. So the duration at the bottom is currently set to seven seconds. I'll come in here and change this to 17 seconds. I'll click OK and scroll out like so. And now we can see we have extended the time in this comp. So now I'll click back into the main comp tab and we can see that this comp bar now exceeds further than marker seven. So I'll click the end of the highlighted area on the layer bar and drag it right across to fill. Then I'll click and drag the time indicator while holding shift over to snap to marker seven. With the time indicator over mark seven, I'll double click back into section six. And looking over to the left of the timeline panel, 
we can see that the time indicator is now placed at 11 seconds. So I'll come and click into the time code and copy the time value. I'll press Command K on Mac or Control K on PC to pull up the composition settings. And in duration, I'll click into it, select all the type and then paste in the new value and click OK. So I'll click back into the main comp and now we can see it's the perfect length. So back into section 6, I now need to tweak some of these layers to adjust to our new comp length. So I'll start with the top layers for the type. So I'll select the top layer, while holding shift I'll select the bottom layer including the gradient overlay. With them all selected I'll drag my time indicator to the very end of the comp and I'll press ALT close bracket. This will then extend each layer right to the end of the comp. Perfect. Next I'll select the first video layer and while holding shift I'll select the fourth video layer. With four of them selected I'll press U to reveal the keyframes applied. So what I'll do now is just click and drag on one of the video layer bars at the end and drag it out a little and each video layer will extend like so. So I'll click off to deselect. Next I'll click and drag over the first set of keyframes for the first video layer and I'll drag them right while holding shift so the last keyframe snaps to the end of the video layer. What I will do now is make my way down on each video layer, click and drag over the keyframes and drag them right while holding shift so the last keyframe snaps to the end of the video and I'll do this for each video layer. So now with the keyframes at the end of each video layer, I'll click and drag the second video layer so the start of the highlighted bar meets with the first keyframe above. Then I'll drag the layer below across again so the start of the highlighted bar meets the first keyframe above. And I'll make my way down dragging the video layers across until I have something that looks like this. So what we have done here is simply extend each video so they spread out further over time. So I'll come up to the work area and double click to expand it across the full comp. I'll press Command A on Mac or Control A on PC to select all the layers and I'll press U and U again to hide all the keyframes. I'll place my time indicator at the start of the comp and I'll press spacebar to activate preview. And that is looking just fine. The videos are now extended a little further across the timeline and the type comp remains until the end. Perfect. So I'll click back on the main comp tab up on the top of the timeline panel and now we have everything done. Every section fits perfectly on the timeline as planned. Now at this point, if you've been following along, I recommend you save your document so we can continue in the next episode. So all that's left to do is the final section, section 7. But before that, there is something we need to look at. Now, working with video, you will always want to make sure it looks the best it can. Sometimes, when we bring video into After Effects, it can look a little flat. Now, After Effects is really good at colour grading and adding colour enhancements to our video footage. In the next episode, we are going to be looking back at some of the video we have placed in the video presentation so far and use some of the helpful effects and presets in After Effects to enhance the colour. So, I'm going to be demonstrating how easily this can be done in After Effects. So, see you in the next video.